All right, so Notion wanted to do another sponsored video. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about how we kind of organize the development of Hazel because that genuinely involves Notion. Long story short, Notion is a productivity app that is kind of like a note taking app, but it's like so much more than that. It's obviously not the only tool that we use, but it actually acts as a really good hub to bring other tools together. And there's so many kind of little gaps that it fills in that it actually ends up just being open on my computer, like minimized at all times because I just find myself using it so often. So in this video, I'm just going to show you a little bit about how Notion is used in my kind of workflow and also like the other apps and platforms that we use to organize Hazel's software development. All right, so first and foremost, Notion. I mentioned that it stays open on my computer a lot of the time. And the reason for that is twofold. Firstly, if I need to write something down, like I wanna take some notes or just like take a little screenshot of something or paste in an image, that's kind of where I do it. I just put it into Notion. Now I used to just like open Notepad for that just because it's so quick to just hit the Windows key, type in Notepad and just paste stuff in. But the problem with that is that unless it's like a really, really, really transient kind of temporary note, it's probably gonna wind up getting lost. But with Notion, with something a little bit more serious, you know, I can easily just like categorize it, add it to like a page, even like create links between pages to keep stuff organized. I can have these like toggleable headings as well. Aside from just being able to paste in any kind of content you could really imagine, I can also embed like entire web pages. So like even if they just get taken down or go offline or whatever in the future, I can literally just like be reading an article and be like, hey Notion, I want to embed all the contents of this web page and it will do it. And it works everywhere. I remember some people saying that like, Notion stores your data on the cloud, therefore it's bad. And I'm like, no, no, that's the point. Like, I get it. Maybe if you have some really sensitive data, you maybe don't want to trust like having it stored on the cloud. You want to be completely offline. Maybe you want something like Obsidian and that's cool. Between you and me, I have like a secret uh, personal journal that I keep in Obsidian. But for like work stuff, it's just so convenient to be able to pull it up on your laptop, like on your phone. I have an iPad as well that I like to use for taking down notes and it's just so great to just have everything synced between all your devices. I mean, I really shouldn't be telling you guys this. Like it's life in the cloud has been pretty good the past like decade or so. And as I mentioned for meetings, like I like to take down notes of meetings. I might just like sit on the couch, have a meeting with Peter all the way over in Sweden, just take notes on my laptop and they're all obviously available on my desk desktop, it's basically like a Google Doc. So that's probably like my number one use case for Notion. It's like, I just need to take down some notes. I need to organize some documentation. I need to make sure I don't forget about those bugs in Hazel. Peter sent me something cool. Let me check that out, but I can't check it out right now. So maybe I'll just file it away. All of like, I mean, just looking at what I have in Notion, like all the meeting notes from like all of our past meetings, which is good to chase up work and make sure it's getting done and issues aren't being forgotten about. Planning stuff. Like planning stuff's really useful. Like I have like, I do a lot of stuff for Hazel, obviously. Like when I was planning like the new kind of renderer for Hazel, it was just great to be able to, you know, write stuff down here, make sure that I don't forget anything as well. Paste in like screenshots, you know, links to kind of good articles, tie it in with like a, an eventual kind of video idea that I want to like make with my findings. But then the other like really useful use case, I think for Notion, at least for me, is just the fact that it integrates like with everything. Like, it, you know, I have all of these Jira issues, for example, and we'll talk about Jira a little bit later in this video, but like all of the issues that are being tracked, like for Hazel, I can just see them right here in Notion. I can have like this kind of welcome page that is just like my hub for like, hey, it's a Monday morning or whatever. I have no idea what's going on because the weekend just happened. I need to get back into work. Like, where is everything? Like what's happening? What are the tasks? Like what are the latest commits that have gone into Hazel? Like from the rest of the team? Where are my quick little links to like open up all the stuff that I need to? I don't know, like what's the weather right now? Like what's my calendar looking like? You know, all of this stuff you can just put into like a little, like a welcome page in Notion. And obviously this is just one way to use these integrations, but I like doing that. I actually got the idea from Tim because it means I can just kind of open up a single page and just see an overview of what's happening. It's like having a homepage for your web browser, but this is like a homepage for your life or your work or whatever it is you care about. So from an organizational point of view, like I really have to say that Notion kind of acts as like a central repository for like all the information that I want to store. But then it's also like a central place that 
ties in everything else. So like, you know, Jira, I don't know, Google Docs and documentation, like all the kind of GitHub stuff as well. I can tie in all of that into Notion and it becomes kind of like a starting point. It integrates really nicely with Jira because you can see all I have to do is paste a link to a Jira issue in Notion and it will display it nicely and kind of even give me some of the information about it. Now, there are several tiers of Notion, but the free tier is like, honestly has pretty much all the features you could probably want if you're just working by yourself. If you're in a team, Notion Plus is a really good plan to take a look at. But otherwise, for most of you, like the free tier of Notion will probably have like everything you need. The only downside I would say for like a solo user would be you can only have one synced database, which means that if you wanna have like Jira issues, but then you also wanna have like your GitHub commits, like your calendar or something automatically synced, like you can only do that to one thing and that's where an upgrade might make sense but definitely head on over to ntn.so slash churno and just try out notion you can try it out for free as i mentioned the free tier is great and notion has sponsored this video so a huge thank you to them now, as good as Notion is for like taking notes and all that stuff, if I have like a little bit more of a serious document to write, I'll usually use Google Docs. The way I see it is that even though I definitely enjoy using Notion a little bit more, just because I can use all of these blocks just by like typing in slash and it's kind of just a more, I don't know, fluent way to write notes, I guess, because kind of like markdown and you don't have to like keep clicking on formatting options and stuff like that. It also has a dark mode, just like out of the box, which Google Docs like, I mean, it's not, that's not that easy to set up. But the way I see it is that if it's like a long long document that really should be divided into kind of pages that you maybe even print and also as a benefit it kind of has that like real-time collaboration out of the box as well for that kind of stuff it's really useful like I might ask zero X for example this happened recently when he was working on the animation system like hey can you please put together like a doc of this new process that you're proposing you know he even did something similar I think for quaternions when he was trying to convert a few things that were still in Euler angles like into quaternions in in hazel he threw together like a little doc I love the fact that Google Docs can just be exported to PDFs like immediately. That makes it really, really, really simple to just write something, send it to someone, and it's just like a regular document. So like for documents, Google Docs, like I love using that. Now the final piece of the puzzle is Jira. So Atlassian Jira is like an issue tracking kind of platform, I guess. You know, it's really funny because, so I, we used to use Jira at EA. I mean, well, I'm sure they still use it. But back when I worked at EA, like we used Jira for our issue tracking. And I hated it because as like a software engineer, I just kind of wanted to write like the code. And then it's kind of like, oh, make sure you're logging your time in Jira. Make sure that you make a Jira for every issue. Like we'd have these development directors, DDs they were called, and their job was solely to basically like, I mean, they kind of oversaw the production of it. It didn't help that back then in the Osiris days when I was working on the mobile engine at EA, for the longest time, it felt like none of the DDs actually had any idea like really what a game engine was. They were just like, they had worked on games in the past, but not game engines. And so there was this weird, like <laughs> our technical director would just have arguments in meetings, like with all of the whole team there, with the DD being like, no, actually you have no idea what you're talking about. This is not how this works. Like, how do you not know what this is? And it was just hilarious. But anyway, the point is these DDs would always be like, make sure you're logging your Jira's, make sure you do this and that. And it was just, everyone hated Jira. But now, now that I am like the technical director of Hazel and we don't have a development director and I'm kind of also, I guess, in charge of overseeing the development of the project, I love, I, I actually really like Jira. I mean, it's different maybe because it's obviously a lot less corporate than like something like EA. This team's also a lot smaller, but Jira is free for like up to 10 people. In fact, a lot of Atlassian products like Confluence, which we used to use at EA, we don't actually use this in Hazel at the moment, but I'm considering it. That's also free up to 10 people. So if you guys in a small team, like I highly recommend you do check out some of these Atlassian products. And Jira being an issue tracker, basically what that means is that every single little task or bug that we're working on in Hazel, we can basically make an issue for it. We can like estimate how long it will take to fix that. We can make sure that people are assigned to it. We can make sure people are actually working on it. It's really useful for me as like the project manager to be able to see kind of like this roadmap view, which I love, which just shows you like, hey, here are all of the epics, which are kind of like, I guess, collections of tasks that form like one huge kind of task. So it might be something like a release version or a major feature, and it's made up of all these tiny tasks, but I can kind of see what the time commitment for that is. And just make sure that like, if we're trying to release something, you know, by December this year, for example, 
like that we're gonna make it. And obviously nothing is gonna get overlooked. Like it's not gonna be like, oh, I completely forgot about that bug or I didn't do this because it's all kind of tracked, it's all organized. And this kind of visual view is also really, really useful. It's also really good for me to just rock up on a Monday morning, as I said before, with the whole Notion hub situation. Like it's really good for me to rock up on a Monday morning and be like, well, what on earth is the team currently doing? And just being able to kind of see, I guess, Peter's working on this, you know, Zero X is kind of finishing up his animation thing hopefully this week. That's really useful. Obviously, as long as your team actually keeps their Jira up to date, that's really useful because it means that I don't have to chase up everyone and be like, hey, Peter, how's this going? Are you almost done with that? Or what are you currently working on? I have no idea. Now, there are alternatives to Jira. Again, as I, like we use Jira in a free capacity. And to be honest, it's so good that like if I was paying for it, I'd also probably be happy. There are other alternatives. Like if you're on GitLab, you could use GitLab issues. If you're on GitHub, the kind of studio channel repositories are currently hosted on github like we could use github issues obviously for this kind of stuff uh there's a couple of reasons why we use jira one of them is because we kind of keep the development of hazel internal meaning that like only people who are in the studio channel organization actually have access to this kind of stuff because we want to separate community issues from internal issues but also because i like in my opinion like i think jira is far superior to GitHub issues. I mean, Jira is like a whole platform made for this kind of issue tracking stuff. Whereas GitHub, even though like they have definitely expanded on their features for issue tracking, it still feels like a little kind of add on to a repository rather than like, I'm managing this huge software project. Please give me all of these tools. So that's why we use and love Jira. All right, that's it. Hope that was helpful. Hope you guys learned a little something about our workflow. A workflow that is still very much under construction, might I add. I am still what I consider to be very bad at running things here. Having these tools in place and these workflows are really, really important because I'm a very busy man. On one hand, I'm building and leading the development of a game engine, which that by itself is not easy. But then I'm also running a YouTube channel and making sure that I make videos like this one to fund development of said engine. And that's just the work side of things in my life. So if I've learned anything in the last like four years, years since I left EA and I'm now working for myself and I am the boss now is that stuff needs to be organized. Stuff needs to go into Notion or Jira or Google Docs or wherever it is because if it doesn't it either wastes time or it gets forgotten about and neither of those two things are good. In fact I'm pretty sure I lost a bill and I need to request that again so I can pay it. <sighs> Anyway, I highly encourage that you guys take a look at Notion. If you haven't already, you can get started absolutely for free. Just go to ntn.so slash churno. The link will be in the description below. Give it a go. It's a really good way to organize your life and your work just to organize the chaos, really. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.